Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today I'm going to talk about a common misconception that keeps going around. Try to give you guys a little bit of a perspective here and show you why it's important and why the misconception can be a little bit damaging here. So the most common misconception I constantly see about quantitative finance typically comes from the business and finance side. Uh, this is being pushed and perpetuated by business schools. Um, but there's kind of this notion that if you have a finance background and you learn to code, therefore you'll be a quant, right? It's as simple as that. You just need to learn finance and learn to code. It'll make you a quant, okay? The easiest way for me to explain this is by not talking about quant finance and going through all the details. It's to use this analogy of basically like being an author, okay? So learning to program in R and Python and C++ and C Sharp and Java and all that, right? They're just languages. So imagine now... I say, you know, I speak great English, I can write, you know, so I'm gonna write a book. Because I know English, I am going to be as good, if not better than JK Rowling, right? Like, <laughs> I'm hoping you guys laugh at this, right? Like, this is a joke, right? Just because I know English and I can write in English does not mean I'm going to be a great storyteller. It doesn't mean I'm going to be able to put everything together. And for those of you that know about Harry Potter and JK Rowling's and all of her works, uh, she's very detailed and lays out these story plots and there's like, I don't know what you want to call them. I'm not an author here, but kind of like Easter eggs, I'll call them, where it's like she's layering the facts in there and you could easily solve the problem by being able to put things together. But there's such a complex storyline that when you get to the point where it's revealed, all those facts that you already knew end up being something great and wonderful. It's like it all connects and it's great and it's exciting. So right, being a quant is very similar in the fact that being able to code is like the language part, right? Being able to write. Now, don't get me wrong, being able to code very well, write code efficiently, optimization, that's for teams that are gonna be what they call quant dev. I'll put them in air quotes here. Um, that's what the investing side calls them. They're not quants, at least not in my mind. Uh, quant dev is more or less what we call in banking implementation. So you take models that are developed, strategies that are developed by research quants, model development teams, um, and then they actually build these models, they should go through validation, and then somebody implements them into a language. Now again, right, these guys are somewhat like experts in laying out the optimization of how the code runs and functions. There's a lot more to it than my code runs and I got a number come out the end, right? You need to look at the optimal components and it's not just algorithmic training. So for example, in banking, you think about mortgages, auto loans, credit cards, right? A lot of this stuff is done basically online now. So you can just make an application or go down to like a dealer, submit an application and get an answer with a rate almost instantly. So you need systems that can process things very fast and there's models behind the scene. So being a quant, you're gonna to need to be able to, of course, right, be able to write code and express your ideas through code, but you also need to be able to do all the theoretical constructs and surprising to most finance and business majors is a lot of it stems from finance, but it's not really the meat of quant finance. So I'm just gonna give you guys a few ideas here and just kind of show you a few things. So you think about quant finance, right? Some of the books that we typically use, uh, these are books on stochastic calculus one and two by Stephen Shreves. Again, there's no coding in these books. This is mathematics applied to finance. Well, probability theory and calculus put together to make stochastic calculus. Um, again, my one of my favorite books, hands down, so everyone keeps asking, Dimitri, what is one of your favorite books you keep referencing for your job? You talk about it a lot. I've done a book review on it. Um, you know, it's Introductory Econometrics, A Modern Approach. Uh, this is fifth edition. Find the cheapest one. Get the cheapest one. They're almost the same. Uh, by Jeffrey Woldridge. Um, absolutely love his book. This is like my favorite book. If you're curious, it's like 800 plus pages. I have, you know different types of bookmarks in it. And as many of you know, I highlight all kinds of sections within these books, but it's 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 a really thick, so you can see here, it's a really thick book, guys. It's It's got a lot of material, it's packed in here. Again, this has absolutely nothing to do with finance or programming. So you need to know like this much information just due to the basics. Uh, here's another great book I'm working on reviewing right now. I'm pretty happy with so far. Uh, it's Mathematical Modeling and Computations and Finance. Again, it's math and stats theory. This book does some implementation of these ideas. So how do you express these ideas, explore these ideas using Python? So again, right, you need to learn to code, but it's not gonna make you a quant. You really need all this, you know, stats and math to build the theory and the ideas. And then finally, I'm just gonna throw another book up here as this is one of my favorite books. Uh, this is Statistical Analysis of Financial Data and S+. Uh, don't buy this version, buy the newer version because it's, you know, analysis, statistical analysis of financial data in R. 
So again, it's by Rene Carmona. This is hands down one of my favorite books. It is not too big. But again, you need the theory, the constructs of how statistical testing goes into modeling, how you do design work, how do you put things together. So yes, you're gonna be kind of using a little bit of finance for that, but the vast majority of this, looking at data, data structures, relationships, it's all gonna be based off of your data and analytics and you need to know stats, 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 a little bit of math here. And of course some data science will come in as things are evolving. But again, programming is not your main goal as a quant. Um, so that's just kind of my two cents on this, kind of give you guys a perspective here. If you're in a finance major, you think the world's ending, finance is going under and there'll be no jobs left, uh, I don't buy into that nonsense, just to let you know on that. There are plenty of jobs that require people skills. Finance does great at doing traditional finance and people skills, right? Working with people to do mergers and acquisitions and, you know, I don't know, debt restructuring. Like there's all kinds of investment banking activities and sales where you need human interaction. You need financial knowledge. You need accounting knowledge. Again, these are things that are somewhat out of the realm of quant finance or somewhat on the fringes. So there is a job. There's a place for you. I don't see a need for people to run out and learn to code just because they think they want to be the next quant. Uh, you really need a lot of those textbooks, a lot of mathematics, and years and years of studying through that material. So again, programming is important, but it's not gonna be the end all be all. It's not going to make you a quant because you know finance and programming. Um, the vast majority, the meat of quant finance is statistics, statistics, statistics. Uh, if you get into derivative pricing, the math plays a more important role. Again, to actually understand stats though, so statistics here, right, you're gonna need a little bit of mathematics to be able to actually do derivations and you know do moment generating functions and things like that. So anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.